Hello. This presentation will give an example of how to find the center of a generalized rotation working in R2. So I've already pre-drawn an image here. This is taken from example 2.14 and shown in figure 2.12 in the current version of the textbook, the online PDF. The numbers will probably change as the volume gets updated, but you can look at those now. Um, I've pre-drawn a transformation A that takes the F in standard position and gives you an F over here. It's been translated and rotated, so in particular we have that A of X is our 90 degrees of X plus 3, 0. The origin has moved to 3, 0, and the F has been rotated 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. So in other words, A is the same as T sub 3, 0, composed with R 90 degrees, or R pi halves. Our goal here is to express A as a generalized rotation. So A should be the form R U theta, a generalized rotation, around some point U. Now it should be obvious that theta is 90 degrees because the the net rotation on the figure is 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction but what's not so obvious is where to pick u so we need u such that a of u equals u and then this will be the desired center of the generalized rotation okay so to do this it can be a little hard to picture this. Now we might start off by, well, a good first step is to draw the image F on the same drawing as the domain F. And then sometimes you can just look at this and see a fixed point. Some of you may already just see the fixed point, but I would say it's not so obvious. Most people wouldn't just see this right away. So you're looking for some point U, like here or here or here, where if you rotate around it, the, the F swings to that location there. So now maybe, since I actually pointed to one of the places that correct U, you might spot it. But let's find a more systematic way to find this when you can't just see it. So the, the principle is the following. We're going to um, choose a point V, where A of V is not equal to V. Remember, we're looking for point U, where A of U equals U, but suppose that's hard to find. Well, we start with the point V, where A of V is not equal to V, and we'll let um, W be a name for A of V. So our picture is the following. We've got a point V. We've got a point W. We now form the line segment joining V and W, and I'll call that L. We take its midpoint, and we take the perpendicular bisector of that line, and I'll call that perpendicular bisector L prime. So L prime is the perpendicular bisector of L, uh, where L is the line segment joining V and W. So we have a right angle here. And the claim then, and here's the principle, is that U lies on L prime, on this perpendicular bisector. So U is somewhere on this line here. And let me draw the picture for this. The U is lying on the perpendicular bisector. Uh, we draw the line from U to V and from U to W. Um, let's suppose these make angle theta. So this is theta over 2 by symmetry. This is theta over 2 by symmetry. And you can see that by holding U fixed and rotating the right angle, U gets swung across W to its mirror image on the other side of L prime. So 
since we're working with the, the perpendicular bisector, U has to lie on it. On the other, and the claim here is that you couldn't have U down here. This doesn't work. Put a big X mark there, it doesn't work. Uh, because if you rotate it around this U, it wouldn't take V directly across to its reflection across line L prime. It would take V someplace up here instead. So we'll use this principle to find the center of rotation up above. So let me redraw this figure a bit bigger with the two F's on top of each other. So here's the X axis, Y axis, one, zero, minus one, one, two, three, four. And I've got the first F, the original to F in the domain in standards position. Second F is here. And now I want to pick some values for V and W to pick their perpendicular bisectors of the line segment joining them. So to start with a nice easy one, here's V1, and here's W1. The line segment joining them is here, and that's the perpendicular bisector. I'll call that L1 prime. Uh, this is the, the line where x equals 3 halves. So we know that the u is somewhere on L1 prime. Now we're going to pick another choice for, for v and w. I'll put v2 here. Its image is here, is w2. The line segment joining the two is here, and the perpendicular bisector is here. So this is the L2 prime. L2 prime is the perpendicular bisector of the line segment joining V2 and its image W2 under V. Okay, and this is the line, L2 prime is where 4x plus 2y equals 9. I'll let you do that computation on your own if you wish. And the two lines, I chose the two lines to not be the same. And so they both contain u, they both intersect. They're not the same lines, so they intersect at one point. So u is the intersection. of L1 prime and L2 prime. And when you do the computation, you get that U equals 3 halves, 3 halves. Well, of course, X is 3 halves because it lies on line X equals 3 halves. You can also check that this other, when Y equals 3 halves, it lies on both lines. So this is, so then, so then the conclusion is that A is R 3 halves, 3 halves, 90 degrees. And that's how we solve the problem of finding the center of rotation. So 3 halves, 3 halves. If you come back to this original picture here, 3 halves, 3 halves sits right here. And you can sort of see if we took the two halves and we stuck a little bit extra on them. Right? If we held that red dot fixed and rotated the original F 90 degrees counterclockwise, you can just see by the uh, rigidity of the motion that you would land on top of the target F. So it's a way to verify when you're done that you've got the correct answer. So that's everything for this presentation. Thank you very much.